Hello, hello friends. Happy Wednesday night. This is unusual for me to go live on a Wednesday, but here we are. Um, it's Wednesday night. I'm going to do the live box opening for the Napkin Lovers Club, the launch box. So we're gonna I'm going to show you what's in there, and then we're going to do a craft. So we're going to be here for a little while, so get comfy. Kick up your shoes, kick, up, kick off your shoes, kick up your feet, put your comfy clothes on, and let's get creating and crafting, and I'll show you what I got here. So um, I'm just going to make sure that this live feed is working here on my iPad, uh, just because here's the deal. Sometimes things don't go great. <laughs> And I want to make sure it's working. So say hello. If you're a text BFF, give me a text BFF shout out. That means you got a little text alert to remind you about tonight's crafty fun time tonight. Um, let's see. Already we got 14 people. Could that be true? Could that be real? Where are the comments? Here we go. Yay. Diana Barker's in the house. Whoop, whoop. Sandra's in the house. Hello, everybody. Um, let's see. Um, why is this flashing across my screen? I don't know what's going on. There's Dawn, a text BFF. Woof, woof, text BFF in the house. Yay, there's Ray. Hello, hello, Miss Ray. And Glenda is here. Oh, now I can see comments really well. There's Annette. Oh, yay. I'm so glad you guys are here. Hi, Gina. Who are my napkin lovers? Who are the napkin lover launch box getters because those are the founding members of the box i just launched this you guys i just started it and it's funny because the way the computer system worked i actually had to launch quicker than i expected to so i'm thank so thankful for all the founding members because you guys are kind of like going through this initial process with me um i did create a private group because we had so many people sign up i'm thrilled i think there are 82 um I planned on 40 <laughs> and then within 24 hours, those 40 spots were filled, 41 actually. And then I said, okay, we'll do another 40. We ended up with 82. So welcome to every single one of you to this membership. You're all welcome to join us if you're a napkin lover. There's me, 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 Deborah says. Deborah Garnett is in the house. Denise is in the house. These are our napkin lovers. Now, ugh. so here's the dealio. I, I, I don't. Okay, so I have other memberships, and with one of them, it's a surprise every month. They don't know what they're getting until they open their box. And with this box, the, the, they're all women who are in the group. So the gals who are in the group did not know what's coming in their box until they opened it. Now, I think there are still a few still waiting for their box, even though I sent them out on Friday, which is unbelievable to me because I did two to three days shipping regardless. I am sorry if you don't know what's in your box yet and I'm revealing it now. I don't know. Maybe I'm sorry or maybe you're welcome. <laughs> I guess it just depends on how you look at that. I love surprises. I love surprises. So I don't mean to bust like, you know, like kind of ruin that for you guys if you're waiting and you want to open your box and be surprised. But I'm going to reveal it tonight. And I think it's a quarterly box, you guys. It's not monthly. It's quarterly, which I love. It's $39 for the quarter. You get um, a whole slew of napkins and some other craft supplies that we're going to be using inside the private group where I'll be teaching you techniques and ways to use your supplies and inspiring you to do new projects. Um, you guys, the comments are coming in so fast and furious. I think I better read a few before I go on any further just to see if there's any questions to answer. See what all you folks are saying because clearly everybody is so excited. Amy says, hi, Grace. Napkin Lovers Club joining from Kansas City, Missouri. Text BFF. Hi, Amy. Whoop, whoop. Text BFF in the house. There's Carrie. There's Arlene. And there's another. There's Terry. Um, no gas. And there's Heather. Hey, 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 Heather. This is the second time I see you today. And there's Deborah Thomas Taylor. And Sharita. Howdy, y'all. She says, Howdy. And Anne is here. Verdana is here. Verdana, you, I just let you into the group. Um, so you guys just be patient with me. I'm one person here. <laughs> and I I've been really happily prepping for tonight's live craft. I got some cool things to show you. Um, and Verdana messaged me and said, hey, I haven't gotten in the group yet. My, my membership to the group, the private group on Facebook is pending. It's because I was getting ready for the live. So just... I will get everybody in place where you need to be. It's really exciting. I know. I'm thrilled with how excited everybody is about it. Gina Pearson says, me, me, pick me. 
Yes, you are in. Yay. Hey, Glenda. She says she loves napkins. We do too. We do too over here at the Comfy Nest. Debbie says she's getting hers tomorrow. Lindsay, hello, hello, Miss Lindsay Carpenter. There's Debbie in Massachusetts, and Jennifer is here. Hey, Jennifer. Whoop, whoop. Jennifer, you have the best spirit. I love, I love your comments because they're so much fun. Michelle from New Jersey. Oh, Michelle, I love you too. Thank you for saying that. That's super sweet and kind to hear from you. Text BFF from Tuttle, Oklahoma. There's Miss Jimmy. My box arrives tomorrow, Terry says. Ah, so some of you still are waiting. Good evening, Miss Jody Ann Bowman. Carrie, how is it possible that you guys have not gotten your boxes? So where there were two, well, actually, there were four people who, after I said, okay, we closed the doors because we didn't have any more, and then all the materials came in. Denise and I got everything boxed up, and I was like, oh my gosh, I can make four more boxes. So I sent to the wait list. So if you're not on the wait list and you want to join this group, the... Um, the waitlist link is in the description of this video. Just get on the waitlist. There's a couple hundred people on there. So whenever there's an opening in that situation, I'm going to, I'm going to message the waitlist first and say, Hey, you guys are on the waitlist. I have four extra boxes who wants in. Um, so it's kind of like a last minute opportunity for them to get in. And so four people did buy those boxes and are in. So congratulations, ladies. That's exciting. Hey, Samantha. Hello. Hello, my friend in Grand Forks. Jennifer hasn't gotten hers. I can't believe it, you guys, because I picked two to three days shipping. Hey, Kathy. She's ready to open her box. I love it. Denise is getting there tomorrow. <laughs> Diane or Debbie says, I can't wait. Oh, my gosh. So fun. Hey, Kana. How are you? Welcome. Terry says, it'll still be a surprise when it comes. Christina. Hi, Christina. Sharita got hers. <laughs> Jennifer says, open the box. Open the box. So you open the box. I love writing little notes, and I don't know how long I'll be able to keep that up because there were a lot of them. You guys, I spent over an hour just opening boxes and writing little notes to you guys. <laughs> oh, joy. It's here, it says. Um, so you open your box. I'm going to get the camera down so you guys can see what I'm doing. Jennifer says, open the box. Open it. Sharita got hers on Monday. Good for you. Oh, good, Anne. I'm so glad to hear you say that. She said, opening the box tonight, seeing the reveal tonight will make the box tomorrow awesome. Hey, Donna. Hello, hello, text BFF. Hey, Vanita in New Hampshire. So listen, here's the other thing that's, so, I know, you got, all right, I'll open the box and then I'll tell you. We got people from all over the place. Like, I'm going to read off some of the states. I'm in North Dakota, and what's so, so fun for me as a crafty chick in North Dakota um, I have this small creative business that I've had for years. I mean, I started my business page on Facebook in 2016. So if this isn't new to me, I've been working on it for years. And it is such a thrill and honor to have so many of you from all over the country hanging out with me and enjoying the crafts and the creating and being part of the boxes. So thank you for that, everybody. Sharon says, I'm here from Arkansas. Welcome, welcome. Yay! Hey, whoever sent me stars, thank you. I think I see some stars. You, my stars are back, you guys. All right, let's open. No more chit-chat. We open the box, and the first thing that you're going to see when you open your box is your welcome, your little message that says, Welcome, you're a founding member of the Napkin Lovers Club. Sub subscription box number one, July 2021. So this is the first box. Quarterly box, which I'm very excited about, as opposed to monthly. I belonged to a monthly napkin subscription and I loved it. It was awesome, except I will say, I was overwhelmed with the number of napkins that came in because I, I collect my own napkins beside, um, and so it was a little overwhelming and I felt like I was getting a lot of stuff that I wasn't able to use in a timely way. So I actually polled everybody in the Crafty Chicks Club, which is my free craft community. So the girls were asking, hey, let's do a napkin subscription because we love napkins so much. And I said, do you want monthly or quarterly? And overwhelmingly, they wanted quarterly. So here we go. That's what we got. So thank you for all your feedback. Here's what's inside your box. And so you get a list of what's inside your box. And I'll go through that in a second. And then on the next page, it gives you the upcoming craft dates. So here are the dates when I'll be going live inside the private group for the members. Um, there are four dates in the next couple of months. Now, 
normally you guys will be getting your boxes um, more toward the middle of the first month of the quarter. This time, because we rushed it so quick, it was at the end. Really, you're getting it in August. Some of you are getting it in August, but I sent them out the last day of July. So you're getting them in the mid. We will be doing a lot. I'll be doing live technique like workshops and live like instructional videos inside the private group. And I'll give you the dates ahead of time so you can pencil them in. So that's what this says. And it says, if you cannot make it to the live, don't worry, because all of the recordings of all the techniques and workshops will be in the private group for you guys to access whenever you are able to get to it. OK, so. No worries if you're going to miss something, but there's a private group for you guys. So here, this is what's in the box. So the first thing that you see when they open the box is I gave everybody a 12 by 16 Teflon craft mat. You guys, I have a bunch of these in different sizes, and I do cut mine when I want a smaller piece. I use them in between my craft journal pages to protect the craft journal page on the underside when I'm working, especially with things that are really wet. Um, so you get a Teflon mat. It is heat resistant. So if you get hot glue on here, if you get really any adhesive, honestly, any adhesive that I put on my Teflon mat wipes off very easily. Paint wipes off very easily. It's really awesome to have. And since we're wor working with napkins, generally we're going to have smaller projects. So you get a 12 by 16 Teflon mat. You can fold them easily. I have mine they're stuffed in drawers, but I have them fold. I fold them all the time and then I unfold them when I need to use them. So don't be afraid to fold them up and put them away. You do get this membership box. This first box, you're getting 14 napkins. I'm going to go through all the napkins in a minute, but let's go through the other supplies that came in the box so you can see what else came in the box. And then um, we'll go through the napkins. Amy loves it. Oh, yay. Love the ones I, ha I have always use extra. Yeah, right? You can always have, I, I feel like, so sometimes mine get really dirty, like here's the one I used most recently, and this one's a really big one. So I use it sometimes as like my little paint palette, and I paint on it, and I just fold it up. Like this one's really big, you guys. You can buy them in different sizes. So you can see, I've used this multiple times. Oh, I cut through it. It's got painter's tape on it because I had cut through it once accidentally with my rotary cutter, but I fold them up and I use them all the time. So I felt like Launchbox founding members, you all need a good Teflon mat to use with your projects. So you got that. The other thing you got, um, you got, and there's a little bag with two different two ounce bottles of liquid. You get this because I'm a huge fan of painted glitter. You're getting some craft twinkles, okay? If you haven't used this before, it's a brush on glitter paint and it's a clear based liquid with the glitter embedded in it. And the glitter is, oh, my light's a little goofy. Let me see if I can fix it without knocking things over because uh, sometimes here at the, at the comfy nest, things do go crash, boom, bang. I wanna show you the glitter because we're all about the glitter. In fact, we're gonna be doing some glitter. Ooh, see? There's something wrong with my tripod, definitely, on my light. There we go. Now I got it turned around for you. Okay, so see that glitter? Ooh, I love the twinkles. I love me the twinkles. So you got a two-ounce bottle of twinkles. This thing will last you for a year, really. I, I mean, they last me a year, this big bottle. So you got a, two, a full two-ounce bottle. My light is wonky. No kidding. There's something wrong. This is like a full floor lamp light, ring light, and there's something wrong with the tripod, but I can't, I don't know. I just, it just keeps knocking over when I go live. I always say crash, boom, bang, right? Um, I did not get the welcome letter. Oh, I can sure send it to you, Pat. Pat, will you private message me? I'm so sorry that happened to you. Or text me because I will forget, my love. I will forget and then you'll be sad. So just, <laughs> just private message me or text me, Pat, and I will send it to you. I'm sorry it was missing. It doesn't say Twinkies. Oh, I love Twinkies. Or I did when I was a kid. It says Twinkles. Twinkles. It's by Deco Art, and it's a great. And it comes in different colors, but this is the one I use most often. It's a clear base with twinkly, sparkly glitter in it, so you don't have to do the glue and glitter thing, which we are going to do tonight. Um, but you got the Twinkles. The other thing you get is a two ounce bottle of Liquitex Matte Medium Fluid. Now, 
you guys, I went through two gallons of this stuff. I funneled into every single one of these bottles and we labeled, Denise helped me label them all, this matte um, medium for you. It's, I love using this with napkins. And what I love to be able to do for you guys is to introduce you to new stuff. Like I use Mod Podge all the time. I use Mod Podge all the time. I have other napkin decoupage mediums. In fact, Mod Podge has a paper decoupage medium that I also have. I'm like a total craft lover, craft supply lover. I wouldn't say hoarder because I use them all. Um, like I'm not just stowing them away and not using them. But I love when I see that there's a new option, like a new brand or a new option out, I want to try it because I want to report back to you and say, this is what I like. What I like may not be what you like, and that's totally cool. There's no problem with us liking different things, but I want to introduce you to new stuff. Like in my other membership box, I'll do that. Like I'll send them maybe the same supply, but it's from different suppliers, different brands, so that they have a chance to try the different ones and decide which one they like most. This is one of my favorites. It's Liquitex is the brand name. It's a matte medium and it's a fluid. Um, I love it. So I gave you guys a two ounce bottle of that. So there's that. Michaela, I am doing a project after the box opening tonight. Yes. Hi, Landon. How are you? Hi. Hi. Okay, will you do me, are you home alone? The other boys didn't come home yet? No, I'm leaving. Okay, will you do me a favor? Turn on that fan in that room, please, because it's getting hot in here with that light. Right. Thank you. you okay, are you going to be near the neighborhood? No. Nope. Yes, again, your time. Okay. All right. It's on my bedside table there. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. My 16-year-old is going, what do you call it? But what did you say? What was the glassing. glassing? He's going glassing. I never heard that term before. He had to describe it to me. If you know anything about hunting, you would know what that means. I didn't know what that means. He's scoping out fields. Um, I, <laughs> you are a super tester of new products. I love it, you guys. And we're going to go through some product reviews tonight for the craft project. So stay tuned because it's going to be super fun. I love sharing that stuff with you. Okay, let's see. What other question? It's all the excitement that's making me hot. I am hot. Like, it's the dang ring lights, you guys. This ring light is enormous. It's got to be 18 inches big. And then I have another one on this side. So I have two different ring lights, and they make me sweat, you guys. It's gross. But it could be the little bit of vino I'm having, too. <laughs> My little paisan glass. So if, <laughs> I don't have a wine glass. I poured a little, little glass of wine but in, like, a regular, I don't even know. It's like a juice, a juice glass. Because that's how us Paisans, we run. We don't we'll drink our vino in any glass that we can get it. <laughs> it may be that that's making me a little warm. Hey, Wanda. Hello in Oklahoma. We're doing a box opening for my new subscription box. It's a quarterly subscription box. So they got the craft mat. They got two full bottles of Twinkles and Liquitex matte medium fluid. They also get a pouncing brush. It's a chip brush. But... I do like when I'm working with napkins or glues or adhesives and gluing things down that you need to push into your project. I like to have a pouncing brush. So this is now your dry pouncing brush. And I may have even said that. Let's see. Pouncing brush. So this is a new member gift. Pouncing brush. So don't put any liquids on this. Okay. This is meant to be dry. It's going to get a life of its own because it's going to become your pouncing brush. So, and if you need to, you can just write that on there. Or sometimes what I do, I take, I took like, I had a decorative duct tape, like floral duct tape, and I put it on the handle of my brush. So I knew that this was now my new pouncing brush because then that determined for me. And I knew that was a pouncing brush. So I sent you a pouncing brush. Next, you got two surfaces. We will use both of these. Inside the private group, we will do projects with both of these surfaces. So here's the thing, members. You can go ahead and use these surfaces today. You don't have to wait for it. <laughs> you don't have to wait for the workshops that we're going to do together in the group. However, we will use these surfaces with our bundle of napkins in some way or form. So hold on to them. This one. is a little four inch chunky canvas. So it's one of those wooden stretched canvases. So they got one of those. They also got, I think this one's six inch. Ooh, 
and Denise packaged these well. So listen, when Denise and I were packaging together, my, my friend Denise came over to help. She's been my helper with only, she's only open with like packing and stacking all the things that I'm sending out to you guys. It can get overwhelming when you have so many to do, but it's so exciting. But I needed help to do it in a timely way. So Denise came over to help and she does a better job than I do. You get a little wooden, I think it's a six inch wooden square surface. And actually, um, it is, it's got like a framed on one side and you could use that to do another project. We will use this side in one of our projects inside the group. Do you have to wait? Do you have to use it the same exact way I do? No, I always say you do you. Um, but that's, those are the supplies that they got. So every quarter when I send out the napkins, you guys will also get some craft supplies to go along with your napkins. So it will not just be napkins, it will be napkins and a craft supply that you can use with your crafting. This box is the launch box and it is uber full. Like, will it be this full every time? No. Um, the Teflon mat is a founding member gift. And then the liquid matte gel medium and the brush will be a new member gift. So when you join as a new member, you will get these. And then the other stuff was their launch box kit. Um, but every kit, when you get it, will have a craft supply or two and your napkins. So let's look at the napkins because this is like, this is what we're here for is the napkins. Debbie says, this is wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm so excited about it, you guys. And I'm super excited to be able to like, craft this stuff with you. Okay, I'm gonna put this up because my head is getting cut off a little bit now that I don't have the box in front of me. That way I don't have to stoop down. <laughs> and I'm short, you guys, I'm little. Um, Barb says, this is awesome, Grace. I literally, literally assumed I was just going to be receiving napkins. All the extra goodies you put in there are amazing. No, you will not just get napkins, Barb. No, you're getting napkins and a craft supply every single time you get your box. This box is uber full. The Teflon mat is your founding member gift. When you are a new member, so anybody who joins now, you're getting your first box in October is the next shipment. You will get the Liquitex matte medium and you will get your pouncing brush because I feel like these are necessary. If you are doing napkin crafting, for me anyway, these are necessary, so I'm sending you a couple. Now, you may go through the process of learning how to do all these techniques and say, hey, you know what, I really prefer Mod Podge. Have at her sister, use all the Mod Podge you want in the world. However, I'm sending you my favorites and you can use them as you wish. Then every single box, I will send you something new like the twinkles or the surfaces. Oh, I have some fun, fun surfaces. Oh my God, I'm so excited about the surfaces for the next box. So if you haven't joined, <laughs> Um, go ahead and get on the wait list because I will open it up to new new members when the next before the next box goes out, which will be in the next several weeks, um, mostly in September. Okay, um, let's see. Debbie's chatting with a friend, Fiona. Kathy says, "I can't wait to get my box. This box is awesome." Marcia says, "I'm so excited." Just Stephanie loves the box. Yay! I'm so excited. Judy says, "I'm so excited to start crafting with these napkins." Fiona, message, right now I do, she says, are, are you just shipping in the USA? Right now I am, but that doesn't mean it has to be that way. I just have never shipped anywhere else. So private message me, give me your address and I'll look into it because I'm open to it. I just haven't done it yet. It's the first box and everybody who signed up is in the US, but it doesn't have to be that way. So Fiona, please message me so we can figure that out together, okay? Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, let's go through the napkins. 14 napkins in this bundle. Will it be 14 every time? No. Here's the thing. Each, I, I love curating these boxes for you guys. I love it. I love it. I love it more than, I just love it. I love putting these boxes. I have a couple of different boxes that I send out. This one in my craft crate, my craft crate goes out monthly. This one will go out quarterly and is specifically for napkin lovers. Um, but I love putting these boxes together for you guys. I truly, truly get so excited about it. Will there always be 14? No, but there will be approximately that many. Sometimes it might be 16, sometimes it might be 12. It really just depends on the napkins, the size of them. I have other things in mind for the future that are not just napkins, but are decoupage products, paper products. So that's a little hint 
there may be some surprises coming. Okay, let's go through the napkins. I kind of, no, I didn't even kind of, I really did plan these out um, in bundles. So what did I say? Okay, so what I said was you got 14, on your little list, it says 14 colorful napkins. Some of them are in sets so that they can coordinate. So here's what I mean. Here's the first set, the first three that coordinate. This is a checkered napkin. Okay, so we, the, a lot of people love the black and white checkered, but this is more like the racing flag, black and white checkered. Not the, they're not the pure squares. They're more like the racing flag, which I think is very cool and unique. And it's a full luncheon size napkin. So this is a big one. And then to go with it, to coordinate with it. And I'm thinking projects, like I'm thinking project minded things that coordinate. You're getting the cocktail napkin that has the black and white polka dots with this gorgeous, gorgeous floral on it. Okay. And for the most part, when you open these napkins, not all of them will be this way, but for the most part, they are traditionally a napkin that has four identical panels. So you get four identical panels with these gorgeous flowers on them. They're black and white with this really bold red floral that you can use separately or together. So you can cut them in four, cut them in quarters and use them separately, or you can find a way to, co to coordinate them and use them together. So this is a coordinating bottle. So you get the black and white check, you get the polka dot floral, and then you get, oh, my favorite, stripes and florals together. You guys, that same floral, but big ones and little ones with a bunch of greenery on it. Oh my goodness, black and white with the red floral. And when you open it up, of course, you're getting the four panels. So if you wanted this to be a background for something, that could totally be a background for a project, a greeting card, so many things, so many things. Um, but the this is a coordinating set. So these three napkins were purchased with the idea in mind that they will coordinate. So if you wanted, if you had a bigger project in mind that you wanted to do black and white with florals, I got you hooked up, girlfriend. <laughs> I got you hooked up. So that is one coordinating set. So there's number one. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, thank you. Kathy says, so pretty. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you think so. I need a race car or a track, Terry said. That was the first thing I thought. It's the race car. It's that race car, black and white. Jennifer says, beautiful. Start your engines. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of too, but I think we're gonna be able to get a lot of use out of that napkin, you guys. It's gonna be super fun to play with. A NASCAR napkin, right? That's what Carrie said too. Sharita found some more um, checkered napkins the other day. <laughs> Christy says gluing stuff is so fun. We love our glue. Okay, so next up, coordinating. Th this bundle is July. August and September. So we're just getting into the fall. We're just getting into fall. The next quarter will be October, November, December, which will be fall, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. That's the next bundle. But this bundle, we're the end of summer, so we're getting some florals, and we are the beginning of fall. So here's our fall coordinating set, okay? The first one is this one. And you guys, this napkin... I don't have it with me, but I did a project with this napkin years ago and I was bummed out that I could not find the napkin. Could not find the napkin, could not find the napkin because I wanted more of this floral, could not find the napkin. I found it and I have a great project in mind with this. So this is the fall. And this one, I, I honestly think, think this one could be evergreen. When we say evergreen, we mean it could be displayed year round. Doesn't have to be fall. But it kind of looks like a floral that would be, it looks like a sunflower with a, with a lighter middle. Um, so I feel like this one could be evergreen. It could go summer, fall, spring, really. Could be up year round. Um, but I put it with a fall coordinating bundle. So this is the next one in this little coordinating bundle. It says, I love fall most of all. And these colors do really go well together. And look at the little license plate. I'm going to put it really close so you can see this license plate. It says grateful with the, with the um, number eight in the middle. And so again, you're getting four panels of that little truck. Okay, so this is number two in this little set. And then here's number three. We're like just getting our feet wet with the fall. Gorgeous watercolor, lantern with candle. And look at these beautiful pumpkins with the florals. 
and the leaves and the the colors are very this is my preference for coloring often is the the very soft pretty colors so again you're getting four so these and it has all the leaves flying around in the air there which i think is so so pretty so pretty love those napkin Lindsay says so this is our little intro to fall bundle and we'll see more fall in the next subscription box because it's quarterly and the next one will be sent to you in October and it will cover cover October November December okay so here we go with lots more just fun napkins and okay I realized when I put this this grouping together how much I love florals because I really do um, this is the sneak peek floral that you got. The colors are amazing. And honestly, I really think this, because I love teal and red together. I think these, I think these could be worked in together. Even though that wasn't my intention, I bought this simply because I love the napkin and I thought you guys would love it too. And it would make a great, it's a big one. It would make a great backdrop for a project because it's really big, really big and beautiful teal and black and white i love the black and white with almost anything so that's the next one this one is darling i am not even a cat lover you guys but look at this kitty look at her big green eyes her rosy cheeks and look at her head full of florals are you kidding me with her are you kidding me who's a cat lover out there show me some hearts and give me your cat's name Tell us your kitty's name, or if you have more than one, we want to know. What is your kitty's name? I'm allergic to cats, so we don't have cats in our house. But look at this, you guys. This one's a unique one. You get two kitties, two kitties, and then a bunch of florals that coordinate with the kitty's little head, <laughs> her headdress. So you get the kitty with the florals, and then you get the florals on their own. Again, coordinating for any project that you want to do. Um, oh, wait, Jennifer says I'm going to cry because that cat looks like my Deegan. Oh, who passed away last year? Jennifer, maybe it was meant to be. You can do a little tribute to Deegan. Oh, Verdana has a Bruce. My cat's names are Katie, Sue, William, and Marty. Suzanne says, I love it. Those are great names. Gary has a cat named Rebel, Roxy, and Oliver, Kathy. I love those names. Butterscotch, cute. And now Jennifer has my girl, Pasha, she says. Aw, I hope I'm getting all these names pronounced correctly. <laughs> Marsha says, I see a cat and I'm cat crazy. Oh, isn't she cute? I'm not even cat crazy, but I think she's super cute. I really do. I really do. Okay, another floral that is a true sunflower. So, again, dipping our toes into the fall, but not like going crazy here. This sunflower is really vibrant. The green on the greenery is really vibrant, as is the sunflower itself. So when we look at this, lots and lots of color, four panels, and if you used it on its own, it could make a really interesting background. Like I could see this on a background, washing over it with a paint, and then putting a phrase on top of it, a phrase that's appropriate for fall. Um, but I, this again, cut them into fours or use them as one big, oh wait, I've got to, I've got to fold it correctly because otherwise it's going to be goofy. Okay. So that's our next one. So where are we? We're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's number 10. I couldn't resist you guys. I'm a huge fan of the pinks. I love teal and look at these. They're just happy little chicks. So we get two different looks. So this one has three birds on it. This one has two birds on it. When we open it up, we're repeating those two patterns. So again, it's not four of the same exact patterns. I think when we get napkins, for me anyway, when I get napkins and I open them up, I'm always so excited because you don't know what's on the inside. You have no idea if you're going to get four of the same exact thing or if they're going to be different. But look at the florals and the detail on these birds. I just love, 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 love the colors on this one. So there's our next one. Oh, pretty, pretty. I'm so glad you love it, you guys. That makes me excited. Make sure that you get on the wait list. So if you think that you're interested in getting in on this um, quarterly subscription, here's the deal. It's $39 a quarter to get all this stuff once a quarter. You pay once a quarter. 
So if you signed up today, your next box would be sent to you in October, and then your next billing would be January 1st. So you, it's once a quarter. So it ends up being like 13 bucks a month, which I don't think is too bad, and that includes the shipping and tax. So it's one flat fee. One flat fee, and you get all this stuff. Okay, check this one out. Very unique colors on this one. We've got blues, we've got greens, we've got white, we've got brown and purple. It's really, really unique. And this side makes me think of my friend Downey. It has the Eiffel Tower on it with just gorgeous illustrations um, in all those fun colors. When we open it up, we're getting a repeat of that same Thing. So we get the two big buildings oh, on either side, one and two, and then two Eiffel Towers with all those florals. This makes me think of like a traveling theme, like we're going to travel to Paris or travel somewhere. Let's travel anywhere after COVID, right? <laughs> I'll go anywhere. Um, but the florals are just, they're like a buttery yellow in there in the middle of these florals, and they're just beautiful. A, a, a huge amount of detail on this one and it, I think it makes me think of a postcard I don't know I just this one's gonna be really fun to work with and actually it does have some wording on it that um, isn't in English I, it must be I'm guessing it's French but I don't know I don't know for sure these are so stinking cute Jennifer says oh Marcia says beautiful I love texture too, Deborah. I'm a huge fan, huge fan of texture. It's a great price, Debbie. It's a great price, 39 bucks. You get it every quarter and you're getting all the workshops throughout the quarter in the private group. You're getting the private group, which is also gonna have, um, will build up that library of instructional videos that you, you'll have so that when you wanna do projects, you can. Let's see what other comments. I love birds, especially hummingbirds. Oh, Stephanie, I'll keep that in mind. That's good to know. All right, here's some more birds. Not hummingbirds, Stephanie, but oh, that one's upside down. Let's get her right set up. Look at the breast on this bird. <laughs> I just said breast. <laughs> I hope it'll get kicked off Facebook. Look at pink. And it's like a fuchsia pink with that gorgeous pink floral behind it. It's got a blue background with some wording. And it's got several little birdies on it. So let's open this one up and show you. I always open them up because, like I said, it's like it's like a little secret. We don't know what's going to be on the inside when we open it up, if we're getting more of the same or if they're going to be different. Okay, so there we go. That's that gorgeous with this, like, it's like a bluish gray background. And it has, you see the words, flowers, fashion, it has all these cool words on the background. Collection, feminine collection, collection, fashion, original, modern, unique. It's just a really fun. It's I love mixed media and I love layering things. And this is already done for you. All the layering's done. So we just get to decoupage that onto something and make it something our own and make it something beautiful. Um <laughs> Bernana, I was thinking that the other day too. She said, I can't imagine somebody using these as actual napkins. They're just so pretty. I was thinking that the other day too because I got another big box of napkins today in the mail because I'm planning ahead for the next box. I'm not kidding you when I say I must have thousands of napkins in my house. <laughs> we will never run out of napkins. At the comfy nest. Well, I mean, they're gorgeous napkins. And I don't let my boys hand. Like, no, they're in the, they are in my craft supply inventory. They are not in the kitchen. But literally, if there was a napkin shortage, we're going to be fine. <laughs> we are going to be fine here at the comfy nest in North Dakota. Because I have so many napkins. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think I saw another comment. Hi, Miss Grace Sprinkling and Dushore. PA. Hi, Sue. I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome, welcome, friend. Okay, two more napkins in this bundle. Gorgeous, big, big peonies in this one with a very soft, soft background and the pretty greens. So this one, it's a large napkin. Again, it's a, one of the luncheon size. They come in different sizes and we're going to be exploring those as we go. But this one has a gorgeous, some open, some closed peonies. And then this next one is another, like, makes me think of travel napkin. And this one, if you are a fan 
of, um, what are they called? Dragonflies. This is for you. Postcard napkin with these. Look at the detail on these dragonflies, you guys. And it has a beautiful background with some script with the postage stamp like that they give you when it's, when it, your, um, post, when your things that you're mailing out are accepted at the postal office. And it says postcard on it with all that beautiful script in the background. And again, a very soft background. There's even a little, I would call that a maiden fly. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this in the camera, but there are several of them. One, two, three, four, five, white. It, it's gonna be really hard for you to see. They're white. Do you see that one right there by my pinky? Right here, they're white. And there's about five or six of them on there. So a few years ago, my kids were little and we went to Sully's. It used to be called Sully's Hill. It's a nature preserve close to where we live. And they had a, a, like an afternoon program on dragonflies, damselflies, and I think they're called maidenflies if I remember right. I didn't even know there were different versions of them and they have different characteristics. But they brought us through there and showed us the different ones and taught us all about them. And it was fantastic and beautiful. And the kids got to catch some and release them. So this one has dragonflies if you're a dragonfly lover. And I love the wings are blue and gray. I'll show you close up again. The wings are blue and gray on the dark ones. And then they have all the white ones on there. And the colors on this are just really soft and muted. And that tends to be... I kind of lean toward that, but then I have some really bold, bright, beautiful napkins like the florals with black and white. So 14 napkins total in this set. I'll go through them one more time more quickly just to show you like rapid fire. Here are the 14. Vanita, are they really? She says they're a sign from heaven. I love that. Oh, and Carrie said, I just read something about dragonflies. They have an extra wing for angels to catch a ride. I love that. That's beautiful. Stephanie can see them. I'm so glad. The white ones are kind of hard to see on camera, but when you get your box, you'll be able to see them. Okay, so let's... Oh, Deborah loves the dragonflies. Their wings are so trans... Yeah, she says they're so colorfully transparent. Some of them are like a really bright blue. They're really quite amazing, actually. Terry... Right now, you can buy singles of some of these napkins online in the shop on the, at the thecomfinesswithgrace.com. I have not had time to put all of them in the shop, but some of them are available now as singles, and I will be creating bundles. It will not be the same exact bundle, but I will be creating bundles for non-members to buy that have some of these napkins in them. So check the shop at the thecomfinesswithgrace.com. So that's a really good question. Um, Cardinals, male and female, please. Oh, Jimmy, you guys give me those comments inside the private group because I will lose it here on this in the business page. I will lose that. I, I won't remember that. And maybe even I'll put a post inside the private group for the members to tell me to kind of poll you and say, what would you like to see more of? Because that would be really helpful to me when I'm putting these together for you. Okay, here's number one. We're going to go through these quickly. One, two. Here's number three. Those ones kind of coordinate together, and I think number four could even go with it. So there's four, okay? Here's number five. Here's number six. Here's number seven. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> number eight. Nine. Ten. This one's really cool. 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, that's the rapid fire. Now listen, um, I say that a lot. Now listen, because I get so excited and I want you to hear. Um, if you are a member, welcome to the club. Thank you for being a founding member. I hope you enjoy it every bit and scrap of what we sent you in this first box. Um, we have members, I just want to mention quickly, 
Indiana, North Dakota, Ohio, Texas, North Carolina, Nebraska, Kansas, Puerto Rico, um, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Montana, Louisiana, Arizona, South Dakota, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, Florida, Ohio, Tennessee. I'm trying to read them, not to, like not read them twice. So you, if you catch me, you can say so. Michigan, Massachusetts, Missouri, California, New Hampshire, Louisiana, Ohio, New York, West Virginia, I think I already said Virginia, Arkansas, Maryland, Mississippi, Kentucky, did I say Pennsylvania yet? <laughs> and me here in North Dakota. So there's somebody else in North Dakota, two people I think. It's so exciting to gather all these people from all over the country. Now listen, Fiona, message me with your address so I can look into sending it outside of the US. I just haven't yet, but that doesn't mean I can't. So please message me about that. Um, I'm totally open to it. Deborah says, the fireflies are my favorite and the French looking one. Ooh, Deborah, I love it. You guys, share, when you get in your boxes, share in the Crafty Chicks Club with the hashtag Napkin Lovers Club your happy mail photo either of your box or you and your boxes which i love and i prefer because i want to see your smiling face because it will help other crafty chicks understand what's in the box and they'll start to get in like the excitement of being a member of that group um so please do that i love when you guys share your happy mail inside that group little happy mail um selfies uh, we will be working inside the group on our projects those of you who are members, if you're not a member yet, you can join now. You can join now. Your first box will come to you in October. And then your next billing date will be January 1st for the January box. Or you can wait. And if you want to be on the wait list and get notification when I'm getting ready to mail stuff out and when your last chance is to order to get in on that next box, the descript in the description of this video, I have the wait list link so you can get on that email list, okay? Um, Lindsay says, we were in Virginia, but now we're in Oklahoma. North Dakota girl here, Sue George. Woo -woo. Hello, neighbor. I love it when North Dakota people give me a shout out because there are not, I don't always, I, I don't think that there's a lot of North Dakota people who listen and follow the Comfy Nest with Grace. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys are just super quiet. I don't know. So thank you for saying hello, Miss Sue. All right, you guys, let's do a craft. How about it? How about it? That was super fun. What we're going to do. I have this rice paper. We're moving on to the craft now. I have this gorgeous rice paper that I bought. It's a decoupage paper. It's beautiful and I love it. So I'm going to put it on a canvas panel. So I'm gonna get this canvas panel open and we're gonna decoupage it on here. But then we're gonna we're gonna like jazz it up a little bit, as they say. I gotta get this plastic off of here first. And what I wanted to say, I'm, it's a nine by 12 size and it's an unusual size to find not canvas panels. The canvas panels are easy to find in this. In fact, in my membership group called the Craft Therapy Club, our projects are usually done in this nine by 12 size. So when we started that club over two years ago, um, I discovered that it's really hard to find frames in this nine by 12 size, that's the size of this rice paper that we're gonna be using. Um, so I pulled one of my frames. What I did was I was able to get online and find, I bought a set of like four black frames that are nine by 12 and they come in white. I think I'm gonna make white, gold, black, brown, like the natural barn wood color. Um, you can almost, uh, for me, Kohl's, Target, Walmart, I, I've gone to so many different stores. Michael's, to try to find a nine by 12 frame is nearly impossible. But if you go into Amazon, go into my Amazon store, I have the two that I purchased that I would recommend. Um, but you could go onto Amazon and find nine by 12 frames. So if you're struggling with that, because I struggled with that originally, it was like crazy. So what I do is when I create something, and this is one of the projects inside the Craft Therapy Club, we did Angels. This is a, like a very intro mixed media project that we did. So when I do my projects and I want to frame them, I do them on a canvas panel or on a mixed media pad, paper pad, and then I frame them inside um, the 9x12 frames. So 
I'm going to use this 9 by 12 frame that I had used for my angel. I'm going to pull this out. And we are going to try to figure out, because I want to frame this when it's done. I'm going to pull it out of its frame, this, out of its frame. Let's get this out. And then and when it comes with the, you know, the little mat for framing smaller photos. But I wanted it for the 9 by 12 size. So this is mixed media paper. We do this all the time at the Craft Therapy Club. This is a piece of paper that we did the project on. And I, I, we do a lot, I do a lot of them in my mixed media pad, my journal. And then when I want to frame it, I can pull it out and put it in my 9 by 12 frame. I think it's a really handy way to not have a million canvas panels roaming around your house for projects that you've done that you want to display. Because now I can put that back in my mixed media book, the paper. Um, in the meantime, I have this canvas panel, like a regular canvas panel by Arteza. And this will pop right into my frame like that. But what I wanted to see is how much of my frame is going to cover up my paper. I want to put the rice paper in there and see. Because the rice paper has like a frame around it in white. I don't want that to show. So I want to see exactly how this is going to show up in here. So if I stick that in there, so see, you can see the frame under here and I don't want that. So if I were to pull that down and just show the graphic part, I'm going to get a little bit of the frame on either side, the white frame. See that? Just a tish. It's just a little bit. And on there, you see more of it. So that's what I wondered is if I put this in my glass, I don't want to see that white frame. So that was the first thing is to just kind of test your frame once you get it to see um, what is going to actually be seen through the window so that you know when you're creating what you need to do so that you get a really pretty view in the, in the window of your um, 9 by 12 frame. Check in comments real quick. Um, what is rice paper? Ah, it's this. See the texture? It's much thicker than a napkin. Thinner than, um, it, but it's thinner than like a cardstock paper and it's fibrous, okay? So you can see the little fibers in the back of it. It's very matte. It almost feels like a really thick um, dinner napkin uh, is the way I would describe it. And I know napkins because I, you know me, I'm, I'm into the napkin thing. I'm going to put my frame aside for a minute. Um, it can tear. I haven't worked with it before. This is my first time. I bought a bunch of it. I'm working with it. I'm going to put this camera down so you can see more of what I'm doing. So I, here's, I was testing the frame out so I could see if that white frame around the, the paper is going to, is going to be showing. Um, you guys, I got this from Decoupage Queen. I'll put you the, the websites right there. See that? decobashqueen.com. That's where I got this paper. I'm going to tear it because I don't want the straight edge and I don't want this white showing. Um, so you see, you can tear it. It tears very easily, but it's way thicker than a napkin. Okay. So I'm going to tear this so that I have kind of a rugged edge. And I love that look. I actually really love that look. I would rather tear, you could put this in your paper cutter cut a straight edge. You could put it with scissors and cut a straight edge. I don't like that look. I want the torn look because I kind of, it, it just looks more rustic and vintagey to me. Is that a word? Vintagey? I'll show you some of the details of this, you know, as we're working with it. But I am going to tear this. My little hands are having trouble getting to the right part of it. Listen, all my family, I'm kind of surprised at, I don't know what time it is now. But two of them went to, sh my, my one son who was just here a minute ago talking to us, Landon, he was going out to go scoping out some fields for hunting um, this fall. He, um, he was gone all day long at a leadership thing for school. Um, so I'm just going to throw these little, they're just the white frame that's around the paper. Um, but I love that torn look, you guys. I really love it. He was gone all day. He just got home. I think he realized he was alone because I'm in here. And the other two, my husband and my other son, are at shooting practice. My boys are on the shooting sports team for both 4-H and at the high school. Um, so they're at shooting practice. 
so my house is really quiet, but I, I really did expect that people would be home by now. <laughs> but I'm still alone, so we get to craft and have a little drinky poo. All right, let's see what other comments we got coming in. I don't see any. Oh, I love decoupage queen rice paper, Kathy says. It's so easy to work with. I'm going to work with it for the first time tonight, Miss Kathy. I've had this for a while. I bought a bunch of it. I just have not had the time to work with it. Look at it. Um, it's really sturdy and it's thick. I like to crumple my napkins so that they have a texture to them. It's really soft. It's, it's unusual. It's an unusual, it feels like a fabric almost. That's why I say in the world of napkins, you know, you have cocktail napkins, luncheon napkins, dinner napkins, um, and some dinner napkins are more like a paper towel, a thick paper towel. They're not the same um, thickness as a like like a regular napkin that you would get. So I think of it more like a dinner napkin, like a, they call them a, a dinner guest napkin. Okay, so I just tore the edges, and do you see how fibrous it is? It almost looks fluffy. It almost looks fluffy. Do you see how fibrous it is? So that's interesting. It's going to go on here beautifully, I think. And then we're going to jazz this thing up. And I've been doing some practicing. I spent like almost an hour and a half in here tonight getting ready for this so that I could show some stuff to you because I love to showcase the products. Oh, let's see if we can get it open. Gracie and her weak arms. I'll get my little hammer out crack the coat on all that dry glue because usually it's just dry. The other thing I sometimes do is I take my little um, scraper thing here and the side that's supposed to open a bottle of or a jar of paint, a can of paint, I use that to loosen that lid and then hopefully, yep, it'll just come right out. You know, glue lids are kind of hard. I know some of you use saran wrap or like plastic wrap around the top and I've tried that. It just... I don't know. I feel like I can always get it open that way. This is the culprit. It's all the glue that gets around the edge. Oh, I dropped the marker. That causes it to be difficult. It's all that stuff that makes it difficult to get it out. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to use my pouncing brush right now, but I am going to take my pouncing brush out. This is the one I usually use. You guys got a new one in your, if you're a napkin, love, um, napkin lover, Lovers Club member, you got a new one. Um, we Let me put these aside because I'm not going to need them again. I'm going to get another brush out for applying the Mod Podge. And we're going to stick this on here and then we're going to get all fancy. We're going to get all fancy with it, but I'm going to grab a whole bunch of Mod Podge. Now, again, you can use whatever decoupage medium you want. I'm just going to use the Mod Podge because I have a whole vat of it here. I got lots of it. It's easy. You guys, it's cheap. It's easy to find. You can even get Mod Podge in the small bottles at the Dollar Tree. Um, and Mod Podge has like many, many, oh, I got like Mod Podge boogers. So it's like the crusty dry stuff that comes off. I'm just going to take a piece of plastic and get that off my brush. Um, they have many versions. They have a fabric version. They have a high gloss version. They have a satin version. They have a paper version of Mod Podge. They have an antique version. They have a glitter version. There is, there are many, many options for decoupage medium. Okay. I'm putting a nice thick coat of decoupage medium because my paper is thicker than a regular napkin. We're going to put this on here with a, <laughs> I, I have that brush. <laughs> We're going to put this on here with a regular or a really thick coat of Mod Podge. I do want to make sure that I'm even. The nice thing about working with thicker papers is that you can pick them up and reposition them. So I'm too high right now. I want to move it down a little lower. So before I push anything down, I'm just going to work on my positioning to make sure that I'm even all the way around. Then I'm going to press from the middle and I'm going to go out. Now listen, I love wrinkles. I know that some of you who want to work with napkins, you struggle with this. I love the wrinkles. If you don't love the wrinkles, you can use 
Mod Podge makes a brayer that you can use to push and flatten your papers down or your fabrics if that's what you're working with. I'm working with a rice paper here. So you could use a brayer. I usually use my hand and with napkins, it's really important to have your pouncing brush because you're gonna push that paper into the glue. This paper is really thick compared to a napkin. So I would never do this with a napkin, but with rice paper, I'm thinking this is cool because it's so thick. It can take it. It's not gonna rip or tear on me. Okay, so I'm just pushing it down into the glue and I really like the wrinkles, you guys. So I don't, the wrinkles don't bother me at all. In fact, I really appreciate them. Now I'm just going around the edges. I went from the middle out to make sure I didn't get a whole lot of wrinkles. And now I'm making sure that those edges are really sitting in that glue so they stay down. I'll hold this up so you can see here in a second. And I will wipe this down because now it has glue all over it. So I'll take um, like a baby wipe or disinfectant wipe and clean that off. That is stinking pretty. And that's what my edges look like. And I like that torn edge look. Okay, so with a napkin, when you put Mod Podge down or any Deco Podge medium, and then you put the napkin on top, then you pounce the napkin. It feels damp on the top because what happens is that Deco Podge medium soaks right into that napkin as it should. Napkins are meant to absorb. This is damp. It's not as damp as a napkin would be, but I can still feel moisture and stickiness on here. So we need to make sure that we dry this so that we can move on to the next step. So I'm gonna use my little dryer and I'll check the comments. I love the wrinkles too, who said that? Girl after my own heart, Vanita. I love the wrinkles, I think they're beautiful. This really doesn't, it didn't take on any wrinkles, you guys. Oh, I love the bee, I love the crown. I'm gonna show you more closely because there's some unusual little um, graphics on here. Let's get this dry and then we're going to move on to the next section. We're going to be sampling some options for some glitter on this project. We're going to do that together. I'm going to show you some samples of different products that you could use to add glitter because I want to add glitter to this. It's a crown for goodness sake. Queen Bee here needs some glitter on her crown. I love the vintagey look of this. And it actually has a lot to say. It says something written throughout. Okay, so there are things in the background, like the words are in the background. There's something behind this flower, but it says something written throughout. Mysteries of beekeeping, explaining, containing the result, and then a bunch of words that are behind the crown, the bee, and these beautiful scrolls. So some of the graphics are behind, like that flower is on top of some of the words. And then these graphics are on top of the words that are underneath. But because the crown and the bee are like the prominent things on here and then the florals, I really want to jazz that crown up with some glitter. So the question is, what's the best thing to use? Yes, it should be just as it needs glitter on the crown. I agree, that's what we're gonna do. So we wanna make sure this is really dry. I'm gonna let it keep drying on its own while I show you some options for glitter, okay? Let me get this camera up. And I, what I did, and I wanna encourage you guys to do this too. I love doing this. It's one of the things that like I get really excited about is to test products. So I have a piece of, this is just watercolor paper. It's just a little, version of it. Uh, I just got this watercolor paper and a set of pencils, watercolor pencils that I bought. This is what it came with. So we are going to do some testing on this watercolor paper and I'm going to put the camera down and zoom you in so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. Okay, so watercolor paper, we are going to be testing some product. Now on here, clearly, it's like a golden color. It's almost an orangey color, but it's golden. So if we want to put glitter, we could go many different routes for adding glitter. And so I want to show you a couple of different options. One of them is to use embossing powder. 
And I do have a gold embossing powder. It is just embossing powder in gold. Um, what brand is it? I don't know. Oh, it's from Ranger. It's gold embossing powder by Ranger. I'm going to use a Versamark stamp and show you just to show you what this does. Okay. So here's a Versamark stamp that I could use to apply this liquid onto the crown. I'm just going to put a little bit of it in this corner because we're going to test it out. That just puts a little bit, I don't know if you can see it. See that shine on that watercolor paper? That's the liquid Versamark. I'm going to put a little bit of embossing powder. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this right over the garbage so I don't get it all over the place. Spread it out on that stamped image. I'm going to put the excess back in the embossing container and shake it out. This, this isn't any particular shape. I'm just testing the product to see what different options I have and what it would look like. So I use the Versamark. It's a stamp pad that will help your, um, it's clear and it's going, your embossing powder is going to stick to it. I have gold embossing powder. We're going to heat that up and I want you to see what happens to that embossing powder when you heat it up with a heat gun. I'm going to hold it up as close as I can to the camera. I want to reach this a little further. I'm trying to try to reach it. Let's see. You'll see it'll start to change it and it makes it raise up off of the paper. I don't want to burn my hand now. <laughs> see it changing? And it gets really glossy. You guys, I looked this up because the embossing powder looks matte, but then when you heat it up with that, it gets really glossy. Do you see that gloss, that shine? It wasn't like that until I heated up. You know what embossing powder is? I had to look it up. They're little plastic beads that when you heat them up, they melt together and they bring you whatever color they are. So that is embossing powder. And look at that gold color. I love it. It's beautiful. That might really work well for our bees crown. But I have other options. So this is what I do. When I'm looking at my project and I don't know what the right supply craft supply is to use on this particular project because it's got some funky coloring here it's very funky and there's some different colors some are dark some are light but i want to put something on that crown so i'm going to take the gold options that i have and we're going to lay them out so the next option that i have is i have some glitter this is glitter i get at walmart it's just a little thing of glitter okay so what is the difference between the embossing powder in gold and the glitter in gold? I'm going to take Tacky Wind Dry. That's what this is called. It's just another product. You guys, I love to test the products out. I can answer any questions as we go. I'm just going to take a little bit of that Tacky Wind Dry from the lid, and I'm going to spread it out right here with my finger. Because I can apply this with a brush or with a... Um, like a palette knife, you can apply it with whatever you want. It's called Tacky When Dry. So I put it on there and it's white when it goes on. I'm gonna dry it with my drying tool. This is not a heating tool, it's a drying tool. I'm gonna dry it. In the meantime, I can put this Mod Podge away, I think. I'm gonna show you a few different options and, and what the difference is between the coloring on them. So we're going to dry that. And when you dry this product, it's dry, but it's still tacky and it sits there. And I'm going to put some glitter on there. This is more tacky than the Versamark. So it's going to hold the, the glitter, which is thicker. So I put the glitter, I just spread it out on there. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to rub it around inside that tacky when dry product. Okay, it's tacky, but it's not like a glue that sticks to my hand. It's on the paper and it's tacky. I pressed all that glitter into it and now I'm gonna get the excess off in the garbage. So here's my next option. That's glitter with tacky when dry. Do you see the difference? See how much more muted? That's embossing powder, gold by Ranger. This is regular glitter from Walmart with that tacky when dry. And you see that how much brighter it is? 
whoa, I love the result with the Tacky One Dry. I love it. I'm not a glitter fan because it's so messy. I'm just generally not a glitter fan. <laughs> However, that's pretty damn gorgeous. Pretty damn gorgeous, girls. All right, next up. I know Suzanne says the gold is gorgeous. They're totally different. They're both gold, but they're both different. Okay, next one that we have as an option. Now, this one's really unusual. Um, we talk about these in the Craft Therapy Club because we've used them before. They're called Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pens. And this particular set is black, silver, and gold. See that? Black, silver, and gold. And... I've opened the black and I've opened the, the gold. So let's look at the gold when I put this on my paper. Watercolor paper, this is a liquid product. Listen, it has little beads in the barrel, kind of like my watercolor pens. Kind of like the watercolor pens that hold liquid in the base and then you squeeze it and the water comes down. This is the same thing, it has liquid in the barrel and then it has a brush, just like the watercolor pens, where the gold liquid comes out of the brush. Now, don't ever shake these with the cover off because it will go everywhere. It's very liquidy. But you need to shake it to activate, activate the sparkle, the glitter. I always use on my projects, this is the gold one, but it comes in different colors. This is the clear one. You can see that band is clear. That's the spec from Noir Clear. This is the Spectrum Noir Gold. I'm going to put this next to here, and I want you to see the difference. It's crazy. And this is why I love to try different products. I'm also going to put the clear on, because the clear takes the color that's underneath it. I could put this clear on the gold crown. It's just going to give it shimmer, but without color. So it's going to keep whatever color is underneath. This is my favorite, favorite glitter pen from Spectrum Noir. So I'm gonna put a bunch of that there. I'm gonna dry them both because they're very, very fluid. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Watch this fluid. It's very, very thin like a watercolor and it will drip and it will like pull down. So I'm gonna dry it and then I'll show you those colors. And you can even see it moving with the air. Hi, Gannon. How are you, kid? I'm good. Hey, good, how was shooting? It's okay? You'll have to share the mystery of how we're going to solve the shells problem later. So I'm going to dry this a little bit, you guys. And what I'm doing is I'm just testing different products on watercolor paper so we know what to use on our project, okay? Look at the difference. Okay, this is the embossing powder in gold. This is the glitter in gold. This is the gold spectrum noir and it looks green to me it has a ton of shimmer but to me that is very green and then here is the clear spectrum noir and you can see the glitter that it adds it adds a ton of shimmer but it's clear it just adds like a pearly shimmer to the top look at how green that is isn't that crazy that's the spectrum noir gold and when you hold it up to the other golds, it doesn't look so gold, does it? It looks more green. I love doing this stuff, you guys. Love, love, love it because I find it very, very interesting. Yes, the pens are in my Amazon store. Yes, they are. I generally buy the clear one, and that's the one right here, Terry. That's the clear right there. There's just a spot of it. Uh, but you can buy it. They come in purple, red. They come in all different colors. Okay, so we have four different options for glitter here. Here's another option. Oh, I buried it. Hold on. I got to grab it from underneath. Hold on, girls. My, my The napkin lover's box is on top of what I need to get to. Here's another option. These are called stickles. Okay, and this is a clear if I want to add gold to my, or if I want to add sparkle to my gold crown, stickles are thick and they come with this really, really um, pointy applicator. And so you just push it around. The nice thing about stickles is that you can get, I'll show you, like drops, like you would get a, like on a meringue pie, like a lemon meringue pie like my mother used to make. It's very thick. So if on the crown, what I was thinking is I want to put 
like dots of glitter on the top where the jewels would be. And the stickles are good for that because they, they are, they're clear. Well, they come in different colors too, but you can create like buttons with them. Do you see how that's raised up? You can create like little buttons with them and they do add a lot of shimmer. Okay, so I would be able to use the stickle to create the buttons and then I like the jewels on the crown. Plus I could use it underneath to add more sh shimmer. And do you see the pieces in the stickles, the pieces of glitter are much bigger than the pieces of shimmer inside the marker, that Spectrum Noir. Totally different look. Okay, we do this stuff in the craft therapy club. <laughs> this is what we do. We love to test things out and to like, we did um, the mermaid project that we did and all of these things are in the craft therapy club. If you were to join the craft therapy club, there are over two years worth of projects plus bonus content like this where we test, um, and that one we did a very extensive test of different shimmer pearl, um, different kinds of paints and markers and glitters that you can use on your projects. The next couple that I wanna show you, I'm gonna grab them girls, Let me just give me a second. I, I should have grabbed them a minute ago, but I hadn't. So I'm doing it now. Okay, of course, of course, of course you can buy paints that have glitter in them. So I'm gonna grab a little um, paintbrush and we're gonna, we're gonna put a little bit of these on. Actually, I'm gonna just use my finger. That's what I do most often. This one is called Extreme Glitter in the Color Champagne by Folk Art. So I'm just gonna put a swab of these on here so you can see some different options. That is Extreme Glitter, so that was the first one. I'll wipe my finger. I usually use my finger just because it's fast and easy and I don't have to keep cleaning brushes. It's a lot faster to wipe my finger off. Here's the next gold option in a paint. You can get a lot of shimmer from a paint. So it's just knowing what pro um, which product you want. I do these sheets in my craft journals, like in my, my, my painting journals, and then I keep them on hand and I write on them what product it was that created that mark so that I don't have to keep doing this. I've done it once and I keep this swatch in my book. Then I know what each product produced for coloring and color um, schemes. This cover broke on me, so I had to paint it. I had to like tape it closed with some of my pretty tape. I got a lot of that one, okay. And the, sh the glitter that comes in these products that one's like really gritty. This one, this particular one that I just did, is really gritty. And some of them are really fine. So they have very different looks to them. We're gonna dry these and then I'll show them to you. Yes, Nancy, the stickles are really fun for anything that you want to have raised up and to have like a bump or a texture. So if you were doing like pictures of cupcakes and you wanted the cupcakes to have like frosting that looked shimmery, that would be perfect for that. Okay, here are four different paints that have glitter in them. This one is champagne and the rest are called gold of different versions. Do you see how different they are? This is why I love trying different products out. I think that the glitter has the most shimmer effect to it. This glitter right here. That's the cheap glitter from Walmart. So if you wanted it super bright and glittery and very, very gold, that would be the right one to go with. But you see the difference? So now I can take this. I have all my products out. I, here's my swatch. I can take my actual panel that we, we've Mod Podged it on, Deco Podged it on, it's completely dry. Now if we wanna jazz it up with some glitter, we can take this panel and we can hold it up next to our project and say, which one do we think is gonna make the most sense? Now, the embossing powder to me looks most vintagey and most rustic. Um, this one looks really fabricated and fake to me, but it adds the most shimmer. 
So, ah, which one would you choose? Which one do you like? Do you like it to be super sparkly or do you want it to be more muted? Do you want to keep the original color or do we want to change the color with one of these paints? Um, I'm going to hold this up here and just take a look so I can make a decision. I think I really, really like this one right here. And that one is a Martha Stewart metallic multi-surface paint and the color is just called gold. Now, this one is a multi-surface metallic, but this one is yellow gold. That one's the one right next to it. So gold and yellow gold, and they have very different looks to them. This one is champagne, extreme glitter champagne. That's this one here. I really like that one too, you guys. Maybe I'll do the champagne because it, it kind of has a clear underbase with champagne colored glitter embedded in the paint. Yeah, Deborah says, I like the muted, saving the original color. Um, so you probably would want to go with even the, the um, Spectrum Noir shimmer. You might like that the most because it just adds shimmer and it's not doing anything to col the color. All the other ones are going to be adding some sense of color to it that will change it. The one that you might like most, Deborah, would be the Spectrum Noir Clear. And you can buy those in sets of three pens. I use them all the time. I'm gonna do a couple of different things. I think here I'm gonna use the champagne glitter. So I'm gonna grab the champagne glitter and I'm gonna use that on the little jewels on top of the crown. So I've got myself, I already figured out a very small paintbrush that will help me to apply that. So I'm gonna grab a bit of that and apply that to that part of the crown. And then I don't know, I don't know yet where else I might apply it. Um, it goes on and it looks milky white, kind of like Elmer's glue does. And then when it dries, it should dry more that champagne color. Okay, and remember, when you're applying these things, you can always go back and add another coat or more of it. So don't feel like you have to like, go crazy with it because you can go back and add more right now i added that to all of the the top jewels of that crown and it needs to dry but it's going to add a bit of shimmer then i think what i'm going to do i think i'm going to do it to the bee's wings so we're going to add a bit of the champagne to the bee's wings because it's clear and it's just adding that champagne glitter so let's get her wings all glittered up. I'll show you here in a second. It's going to be easier to see on the wings how it adds like a milky, it almost looks like an El a thin Elmer's glue, but it has that glitter embedded in it. So I just stabbed it onto the wings and you can see how the wings look milky white right now, but when that dries, it's going to be that champagne glitter. You can apply it wherever you want. If you want your roses to be shimmery, go ahead and add it to the roses. If you just, like, I think these would be gorgeous. And I almost feel like I want to add, I might want to add one of the Martha Stewart golds to it. Those were all the options. So um, I hope that from seeing, witnessing, kind of watching me do this tonight, that it, helps to showcase to you how to figure out what is the right product to use. I'm gonna add a little bit of, um, it's this one. It's the Regular Gold by Martha Stewart and it's her metallic. She has beautiful metallic and pearl paints. Seriously, you guys, she, her brand of metallic and pearl paints are phenomenal. I'm gonna add a little bit of this. I don't think I'm gonna do all of these swirls I don't know what to call them, these little like flourishes. I'm not gonna do all of them, but I'm gonna do a little bit and just see what happens here. I'm gonna start on the bottom and go up like this main branch and add some glitter. It's very, very close to the color on the main branch because the main branch is dark and then when you come up on the flourish, it gets brighter. So I'm gonna add some of this here just a little bit. I just got a little brush. Any of your detail brushes are going to help you with this. So those are great to have in your craft stash is some detail brushes. So let me just start with the bottom and then we'll look at it in the light and decide how much more of that we want to add. 
It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just highlighting here and we're just trying to jazz it up. Doesn't have to be everywhere. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just jazzing it up. Okay, I put the gold metallic on the bottom of these two flourishes. So you're gonna start, you can see that sheen. You can see the wings. Ooh, the wings on that bee. And you see how different that shimmer is on the wings than it is on the flourish. The flourish is more of a metallic where the wings on the bee, that glitter is more of a shimmer. And I know it seems so, that the, the difference seems like it's not very big, but it is when you look at them together and you see them next to each other, the differences are big. I'm gonna continue with the dark spots on the flourishes with this Martha Stewart gold, and then I'm gonna take the yellow gold and add it to the lighter parts. Okay, so I'm doing the darker gold now. Then I'm gonna, I'm not gonna even put it in water. I'm just gonna take that dark gold off with my rag. And then I'm gonna go into Martha Stewart's light gold, the yellow gold, and I'm gonna add it to the lighter parts of the flourish so that the flourish has more shimmer, but I'm not changing the color scheme because the bottoms are dark and then see here in the middle, it's really light. So I'm gonna take that lighter gold. If I didn't have this, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> I would really struggle to know where, what to put where. But because I could hold my watercolor paper in front of my project and, and look at them, then I felt good about committing where I wanted to use the different options, the different paint colors, if that makes sense. Oh, I hope this is helpful to you guys. We do this in the Craft Therapy Club. You'll find some bonus content in that group. It's all organized in a library. It's two years worth of stuff like this where for, um, you know, depending on the project, and we did an extensive, really extensive one of these with many more products in the colors that we needed for the mermaid's tail that month. Um, but I love to share these findings and to show you how to come up with this stuff on your own so that you, when you're doing your own projects, you can go into it knowing how to test this stuff out. Okay. Let's take a look. I'm gonna dry her wings a little more because it's still looking milky because I put a lot. Let's dry those wings and then I'm gonna show you the differences. The wings are gorgeous, um, Deborah. I think it's my favorite, but I used the same product on the wings as I used on the top of the crown. I think I need to glitter the whole crown now that I see them. I feel like I need to glitter the whole darn thing. If you guys don't mind hitting that share button, it really helps me a lot if you guys will share this. If you're catching the replay, I would love to know that you're here as a replay watcher. So please make sure that you say hello. Let me know that you're here. And whether you're watching the replay or not, if you can hit that button, it really helps us small business owners meet new people. Okay. All right, so I put the same product on the top of the crown as I put on her wings. And then I used two different colors of gold, Martha Stewart. Regular gold on the bottom, yellow gold on the top. And I'm gonna show you some of that glitter and that glam. So it adds a sheen that wasn't there before because the rice paper is very matte and it's very, um, fibrous and dry. So if you want to add to something like this that has a little glitz and glam, you could do that. Okay, so again, what I used on her right now, I used this one on the wings and the crown. I used this one on the bottom of the the flourish and I used that one in the middle of the flourish where it was lighter. I didn't use any of the glitter, although I love that. I love that glitter. I didn't use any of that. Now I wonder, I think, I think the crown needs more. So I'm gonna grab my little paintbrush and I'm gonna add some more to the crown. I'm not gonna use the embossing powder. I'm not gonna use the glitter. I'm gonna stick to what we've been using so far. And I think this one 
the extreme glitter that is used on the wings and the other parts of the crown has the most glittery effect and you can see how it looks like like Elmer's glue almost but there are itty itty bitty bitty bits of glitter in there I'm gonna apply that to the whole crown because I, I really I just am loving the shimmer that it's throwing off so not just on the top jewels I'm gonna put it on the whole darn thing and you can see I just put it on this middle section these peaks and you can see how it looks white can you see that how it looks white right there but it will dry and it'll be completely clear and then all we'll get to see is that champagne colored glitter which i think is perfect for the crown and so i'm going to put it on nice and thick so we can get a nice glittery <laughs> look to this crown then this is going to go behind the glass before i put it behind the glass i will top coat this um, and you can top coat it with your Mod Podge again, but listen, this is very glittery and glam. There are special top coats. Mod Podge has a spray top coat that is for glitter. I didn't exactly use a loose glitter though, so I don't need that. What I think I will use is a glossy Mod Podge as my top coat. I have both the spray and I have the brush on. I think I'm gonna use the spray because it's just really easy and it's really fast. I love talking top coat too, because I have a whole book that I've been practicing and testing out top coats. Okay, so now I added that glitter, that extreme glitter to the whole crown, to the wings, and then we have the, the metallic paints on the floor flourishes. And so I added that to all of this stuff that's in the foreground. It's all on top of the words and all these other little bees are in the background, but by adding all that glitter, it just really makes them pop off of that project and really makes them pop off the page. I wish I had, if I had, I don't have any pink um, paints that are, I don't think I do, maybe I do. I have red, I know I have red and I have a very light, like almost Easter egg pink, but I don't have that color because if I did, I would definitely add it to the florals too because they're in the foreground, but I don't have that. So it's just gonna go on all that stuff in the center. Rice paper and a slew of different glitter, glam um, paints and options from embossing powder to glitter. Those are what we were playing with tonight. I'd love to know what you guys think of this. Um, if you think that this is something you would do on your own, or is it something that you prefer to have someone like me do for you and then to showcase all the different product options so that you can just go and pick and buy the ones that you want? I would love to know that. So if you're here live, if you're catching the replay, give me that feedback. I would love to know. Thank you for sharing, Janice. Thank you for sprinkling. Rhonda says, very pretty. Hey, it's okay that you're late, Brenda. You're welcome anytime, all the time, you're welcome. Thank you, Rhonda, for sprinkling. You guys, if we could try to get 30 shares, it would help me so much because I don't know, it's been so tough on Facebook lately to get um, like in front of people organically. It used to be a lot easier to do that. Janice, I'm so glad you're loving this. So any help you guys give, I appreciate it so much. Yes, Jennifer, This everything's always available by replay, absolutely. Rhonda says, very informative, and Stephanie shared. Thank you for doing that. Yes, Kathy says, I'm going to get me some of those glitter paints and trying them. Oh, my gosh, they can have such a huge impact on a project. And you can see this is a very vintage um, looking project. It looks very um, old and aged, like almost like a coffee-stained paper, resume paper, which I love working with. But by adding all that glam, that little glitter, it's not... It's not like bam in your face glitter like this one. It's the really subtle stuff, but it, it really does have a huge impact on a project like that. So thank you for joining me, you guys. Thanks for watching the whole box reveal, the box opening of the launch box for the Napkin Lovers Club. Please join us. Um, hit the follow button on my page so that you get some notifications. Join my, um, I have a, 
texting service, you can join that or get on the wait list for the Napkin Lovers Club. Any way you can stay connected, I'd love to have your company on a regular basis, you guys. Have a beautiful, blessed night. Thanks for being here with me. I love you doing the experiment. I'm so glad, Deborah. Yes, it does. Deborah says the other Deborah, Deborah Garnett says it really brings it to the forefront. I totally agree. Totally agree. Okay, you guys, I'm going to hit the road. Go see what my family's up to. Good night and many blessings. Bye.